Hey gamers, it's Aaron from Sockpop here, and today we're talking about the Sockpop Top 5 Unity Shaders. We'll discuss and share some of our favorite shaders in Unity. Uh, this video is going to be really useful for beginners to the program, as well as for people who've been using it for a long time already. The source code for all these shaders and the full project file can be found in the description, so make sure to give that a download. Uh, before we begin, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date to our latest game releases and uh, the behind the scenes videos we make. That's for the intro, we're just going to dive right into Unity with shader number 5. So, so number 5 is a really easy one. Everybody has seen this default Unity skybox. It's the first thing you see when you create a new project, but it looks really bad and everybody hates it. So the first shader we are going to share here the number five shader is a simple horizontal skybox shader so uh, it's basically a simple way to make a gradient as your skybox so you just added this one it's a it's a blue one you have three colors the top color the horizontal color the bottom color and you can change these to change their respective top bottom or a horizontal color so this is a great way to make your project look more polished right from the start uh, you could do a simple realistic sky color ish or you could do something a bit wild and go all the way orange so that's number five now we'll dive into number four which is a sockpop classic and it's called the Yupi shader uh, this is one Tom made a long time ago and uh, I ended up changing it to a wobble variant so this shader solves two things at once one, lighting in Unity can be a bit of a pain, and two, things don't move enough. So this shader, you can see it on the right here, will make objects appear unlit, and it gives them a nice PlayStation 1 style wobble to them. Uh, the objects being unlit is great for giving you a lot of control over the color. The color that's here matches exactly what you're gonna see on the screen, which isn't necessarily the case for the, uh, for the standard shader. And I think the wobble gives it a nice little dynamic look. So yeah, I like, I like the shader. Shader number three is called Mirror Reflection. Uh, now we didn't name it that because it's a classic that can be found in a lot of places on the internet. Simply put, it will make things reflect like, uh, like it was a mirror. Object looks nice and shiny and it's great for things like water and ice. So you can see it over here in action. This is the one that has the shader. These are just some random objects. And this one comes with a C-sharp script that you will have to add to the object that has the material attached to it. But it can be great for making nice water shaders. And uh, if you start modifying it, then you can create some really, really nice water shaders. So leave a comment in the, on the video if you'd like to see our tutorial on water shaders. So we can go a bit more in depth. Uh, be aware that this effect is pretty performance heavy so uh, if you're gonna have a bunch of them maybe don't do that all right number two is a true sockpop classic tom was also the first one to, in sockpop to start using this and you can find it in a lot of our games uh, it's the screen space pattern shader uh, it's a nice little effect that overlays a pattern in screen space over objects uh, it sort of gives the illusion of texture but it makes it also kind of cute uh, I think it looks really cool on this laptop. So it looks like a screen almost. And uh, yeah, you can change the scaling like this. So you can make it nicer, smaller or bigger. You can change the pattern. So now I've this one is set up with like a horizontal line pattern. This one is set up with dots. And it's a great little way to make things look cute, I think, and more polished. So one great thing as well to use this on is on UI. So if you if you see here, I've added it to this UI. It's a slightly different shader, but it's also included in the project. And you can make it scroll, and it's a great way to make your uh, UI look cute. And then there's the last, but certainly not the least. It's a controversial one, but the number one spot goes to the Unity Standard Shader. The Unity Standard Shader can look really good, it can also look really bad, I hear you say, but uh, with some simple tricks, you can make this one look really good, than people, a lot better than people give it credit for. Our latest game, Hamster All-Stars, uses pretty much 
uh, only the standard shader so it can be used for games and it can be used for more stylized effects so how do you make the shader look good we're just going to create a simple scene for that we're going to go create scene test scene open that up it's going to have the ugly skybox again so we'll go to our project we'll add the, the sky one for now the, the blue one then we're going to add a simple cube to test it now this cube still looks pretty bad if you ask me then we're going to add a sphere that one looks arguably even worse uh, there we go let's create a quick material for both so I'm going to name this sphere or name this ground ground sphere sphere ground we're going to make like a bluish color to blend in nicely with the background I'm not going to spend too much time on choosing that color then the sphere is going to be red so this is what you'll get by default with the standard shader if you create a new scene and yeah this looks really bad so the first thing we'll fix is make sure that these dark shadows are not so dark anymore so to do that we're going to go into lighting and instead of the skybox lighting we're going to use color and we're just going to use a sort of whitish color grayish then it's still a bit, the lighting is still a bit yellow. That's because the directional light is set to yellow by default. So if we change that to white, that's already looking a lot better, uh, except for the colors that I picked aren't as nice. So let me try to change that. This one a bit less red. Now this still doesn't look that good, but there's one simple trick that they don't want you to know about. And it's you go into lighting then you're going to go into environment reflections. Then you're going to go into custom and you're going to set up a cube map. So the cube map we're going to be using is a fake cube map. It's just a white image like this. Uh, and we're going to mark it as a cube map in the, in the texture import settings. And then we're going to assign that here. And as you see, it makes everything the size of the objects this this there's going to be a light ray coming out from the from outside and it's going to reflect into the camera so it gives everything a much nicer sort of shine to it it's also really visible here if you go along the ground so this is without so the ground stays the same color which is kind of boring looking but if you set the intensity again you're gonna have this nice, wonderful. So this is also great if you make it a bit more transparent or if you make it transparent, this can look great. Like so, it looks like a bit of a slimy thing. And if you, uh, if you experiment with the metallic value, it can also create a lot of different effects. So imagine we're gonna make a new sphere this one's going to be a metal sphere. And we're going to make it look. Now we're going to change the metallic value. Oh, it's already really high. So, And it looks a lot nicer than if we didn't have all these other settings. So it's the, the standard shader is really underrated and it can look really nice. Um, so it's a nice little surprise to have that, I think, as the last one. I think people don't give it enough credit. So that was already the last shader in the countdown. Once again, the full project file for this video can be found in the description. So check that out. Uh, thanks for watching and see you later.